If you want to study or work in Germany, you most likely have to pass a German language exam. This is to prove that you can speak a certain level of German. Now there are many different ones out there with weird names like TESTAF and DSH. So in this video, I'll tell you everything you need to know about German language exams and explain the most common ones. So in German, you have six language levels ranging from A1 to C2. A1 is beginner, A2 is elementary, B1 and B2 are intermediate levels, C1 is advanced and C2 is proficient, so almost native. And for each level, you can take a language exam. For example, if you want to study at a German university, you have to be on the C1 or B2 level of German and you take a language exam to prove this. If you pass, you get a language certificate and you can now flex on your friends. Now some of you think that taking an exam to receive a certificate is unnecessary. I mean you can speak the language, right? Isn't that more than enough? Well, there are many reasons why you need to take a German language exam. The truth is that many institutions, universities and recruiters will first read your resume and evaluate your qualifications. Having a solid German language certificate on your resume will make a good impression in Germany. You need concrete proof that you can speak German. So if you have been learning German for a while now and you feel like you have reached a good level, it's time to get an official German certificate. There are many different language exams that you can take, so you might be wondering which one applies to your specific situation. So by far the most popular language test is the Goethe exam. This one includes all six German levels. A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, and C2. And for each level, you can take the exam if you want. Now, this one is offered worldwide at Goethe Institute's foreign offices and partner institutions in about 100 countries. Chances are that there is also a Goethe Institute in your country, usually in one of the big cities. On the official Goethe website, you can look up all the different Goethe centers around the globe. For example, you can look at Goethe centers where you can learn German, or you can also look at examination centers. So these are centers where you can take the good exam. Now in the exam you have to show specific language skills. These are reading, leseverstehen, writing, schriftlicher Ausdruck, listening, hörverstehen and speaking, mündliche Prüfung. The exam format is a little bit different on each level, but you typically get a combination of multiple choice questions, written essays, oral interviews and comprehension exercises. Nothing too dramatic. With the right preparation, you can pass them very easily. In the Goethe exam, the four modules are graded. For A1 and A2, you have 25 points per module, and in total, you have to score 60 out of 100, with 15 points in each module to pass. For B1 and higher, there are 100 points for each module, and you have to at least get 60 in all four to pass. Now, the Goethe language certificate is going to be valid for a lifetime. You get it once and it doesn't expire. And of course, language exams are not free. The cost of the Goethe exam is different by level and location, but it's typically from 100 to 300 euros. Personally, I know the Goethe exam the best, and I've taught quite some people how to pass it. Knowing about these exams is one thing, but preparing for them is a whole different topic. In my language program Speedy German, I teach students how to learn German fast and pass the Goethe exam. Check it out if you're interested. The link is in the video description. Now, a different language exam that you can take is the DSH, Deutsche Sprachprüfung für den Hochschulzugang. It's literally the German language test for admission to the university. So this one is for you if you want to apply to a German university as an international student. Can you understand the lectures in German? Can you answer questions related to academic topics in written or spoken form? You can take the DSH only in Germany. It is offered by a lot of German universities and it usually tests the levels B2 to C2, so intermediate to advanced. The grade goes from 1 to 3, with 3 being the best grade. If you get the DSH-1, which is a score over 57%, you are on the B2 level of German. DSH-2 is if you're over 67%, and this is the equivalent to C1. This is the level you need to study at most German universities in the German taught program. And if you score above 82%, you get the DSH-3 which is the C2 level of German. DSH is one of the more advanced but cheap language exams. Taking this one costs about 40 to 170 euros and it's valid for two years. You have two years time to take the certificate and enroll at a German university. Another popular language exam is the TESDAF, Test Deutsch als Fremdsprache, so test German as a foreign language. There are about 450 test centers in 95 countries worldwide and you can take the exam six times a year. TESDAF is a big boy exam because it aims to test the higher levels from B2 to C1. 
Now the topics and tasks of the test dev are directly related to university studies. It's a little bit like the DSH. They are based on important tasks and courses, discussions and other study related activities at the university. For example, it's about giving an opinion on the semester contribution of students or noting down important contents of a lecture. Again, as in all German language exams, listening, writing, speaking and reading are tested here. Now the test dev doesn't categorize the results as a simple pass or fail. Instead, it puts you on a certain proficiency level. Each section of the test dev is scored separately and you get a test dev level TDN for each section. The range is from TDN3 to TDN5, with 5 being the highest. Test dev level 3, TDN3 is a solid B2. Test dev level 4, TDN4 is B2 to C1 and level 5 is a solid C1. In general, you need to get TDN4 in all parts of the exam to get into universities in Germany. But every university in Germany has its own admission requirements, so depending on the degree program, you could also get in with a TDN lower than 4. One thing that makes test dev special is that you can write a digital or paper-based exam. They have slightly different exam structures and you can look up the exact differences on their official website. Now the test dev certificate is also going to be valid for an unlimited period of time and the price is something between 125 and 210 euros. So it's one of the more expensive exams. But the ultimate question is, which one should I take? One of the main things you need to keep in mind is your level. We remember the six proficiency levels A1 to C2. Test F and the DSH exams are tests for upper intermediate and advanced students, so B2 to the C2 level. On the other hand, the Goethe Institute offers six different exams, so one for each level. So if you are not taking the exam for a specific purpose and you don't know yet where exactly you're going to use the certificate, I can recommend you take the Goethe exam. In that case, you could aim for the highest level you can comfortably pass. You have the advantage that the Goethe Institute is well known internationally as a brand. The university or the employer will instantly recognize it. I would say test staff and DSH have a more standardized format. For the Goethe certificate, you need to have a more broader knowledge of the German language. Now, there are also some differences between DSH and test dev that you need to keep in mind. The first one is about where you can take the test. You can take the test dev in your home country, but DSH is only available in Germany. The exam fees depend on the country and institution, but test dev is usually slightly more expensive. Now, imagine you've been learning German for a while now and you want to go to a German university. Let's say the requirement is C1. In that case, if you feel confident, you can directly take the exam that tests the C1 level. You don't have to take A1, A2, B1 and B2 and then C1. You can directly go for the desired level. Otherwise, if you would take every single exam on the way, things would get way too expensive and you end up paying hundreds of euros just for language exams. One exam for the right level is enough. Most people choose the exam by their location, schedules and price. And if you fail a language exam, it's not the end of the world. You can retake it as often as you need. Now here is a list of other German language exams that you could take, but in most cases you are absolutely going to be fine with either Goethe, DSH or TestF. Check out Speedy German and other useful resources in the video description. Subscribe and join our huge Discord community. Love you and stay focused.